Fanatics. Welcome back to my channel, Diamond Painting Fanatics, and welcome to another episode of True Life Crime. Um, yeah, I haven't pre read this, I don't think. I just know, uh, let's have a quick look, boom, um, East Tilbury in Essex, so we're staying local, and this is the very tragic story of Danielle Jones. So feel free to grab whatever you're working on if this is your cup of tea. If not, I totally understand. But grab whatever you're working on and Let's listen to the true life story of Danielle Jones. So just have to place that. <coughs> okay. Uh, Danielle Jones. Um, is an English murder case where no body was found and the conviction reply, reply, relied upon forensic authorship analysis which means um, the application of linguistic knowledge methods and insights to the forensics con the forensic context of the law, language, crime, investigation. Okay, Th doesn't make it any clearer really, does it? Oh, okay, so the conviction relied upon forensic authorship analysis of text messages sent on Danielle's phone. Danielle Sarah Jones was last seen alive on the 18th of June 2001. Danielle's uncle Stuart Campbell, a builder, was convicted of abduction and murder on the 19th of December 2002. Campbell was sentenced to life imprisonment for murder as well as 10 years for abduction. Wow, her uncle. It is generally somebody that you know, sadly. After the trial, controversy arose when it, re it was revealed that Campbell had prior convictions for indecent assault on other girls of similar ages. <clears throat> the use of forensic authorship analysis of text messages in the case provoked research into its use in other cases. He was from Malden. Oh my god. <clears throat> it's scary because I go to Malden a lot. Um, disappearance and investigation. Just gonna place this row. OK. 
come on. Cindy, oh, there it is. Okay, disappearance and investigation. I do apologise. Fifteen-year-old Danielle Jones was last seen near her home in East Tilbury. Just okay. Uh, in Essex on the morning of the 18th of June 2001 while walking to a bus stop. Suspicion fell on Campbell almost immediately and he was first arrested on the 23rd of June 2001. Oh my God! So that's 18, 19, 20. Five days later. I'm a, I should just keep reading. Uh, first arrested on the 23rd of June, five days after Jones went missing. Detectives had delayed his arrest while weighing the possibility of endangering Danielle's life. On the presumption she was still alive and being held against her will, against the possibility of Campbell leading the police to her. During police interviews, Campbell was described as uncooperative in one 20 minute interview with the police, Campbell refused to comment on 50 questions. The investigation included several appeals to the public for information, including a reconstruction on the BBC telev television programme Crime Watch. During the investigation, over 900 police officers and support staff searched over 1500 locations for Danielle's body. As within two months of her disappearance, police working on the case were convinced that she was dead. What convinced them? Murder trial. On the 17th of August 2001, police re arrested Campbell on suspicion of murder after finding significant evidence which appeared to support their theory that Danielle was now dead. A police superintendent said to the BBC that Campbell, quote, developed a relationship with Danielle that was certainly inappropriate and probably unlawful. Danielle, <coughs> Danielle, <coughs> excuse me, Danielle apparently tried to disengage, but Campbell insisted. By the, by the 14th of November 2001, the CPS, Crown Prosecution Service, decided that the police had enough evidence to charge Campbell for murder, even though her body had not been found. On the 14th of October 2002, Campbell went on trial for abduction and murder having spent 11 months on remand, on remand. The Crown's case rested upon several pieces of evidence. Danielle had disappeared without contacting her parents and had been seen talking to a man in a blue Ford transit van resembling Campbell's on the morning of her disappearance. The testing of blood-stained stockings discovered in the loft of Campbell's house found DNA matching, matching both himself and his niece. Lip gloss used by Danielle was also found in Campbell's home. A diary kept by Campbell revealed an obsession with teenage girls with testimonies that Campbell had manipulated young girls into posing for topless photographs. Um, a text message that Campbell claimed Danielle had sent to him. Hi Stu. It, it, 
I can't show you it, but um, you know, it's like thanks with the Z and for the number four. Um, Hi Stu, thanks for being so nice. You're the best uncle ever. Tell mum I'm so sorry. Love you loads, Dan. The message was sent in uppercase. However, Danielle habitually sent messages in lowercase. They're automatically lowercase, aren't they? The, you have to click it to... Okay. Mobile switching centre records demonstrated that Campbell's alibi of being at a DIY store half an hour away in Braley was false and that Campbell, Campbell's and Danielle's mobile phones had been within the range of a single mobile phone mast at the time that a text message had allegedly been sent by Danielle to Campbell. So both phones are together. That would make you... Um, Wow, yeah, he looks bad for that, doesn't he? Oh. Um, this, along with foren forensic authorship analysis, indicated that Campbell had written the message, not Danielle, implying that Campbell had sent the message to himself using Danielle's phone to make it appear that she was still alive. Campbell was found guilty on both charges on the 19th of, 19th of December 2002 and sentenced to life imprisonment for murder to run concurrently with a 10-year sentence for abduction. The High Court later ruled that Campbell should serve a minimum of 20 years before being considered for parole, meaning that he is set to remain imprisoned until at least November 2021 and at the age of 63. That's not far, guys. Well, it's a year away, isn't it? Wow. Aftermath of the trial. After his trial, it was revealed in 1989, Campbell had received a 12-month suspended sentence for forcibly detaining a 14-year-old girl in his house and taking indecent photographs of her. The use of text message evidence in the trial led a group of researchers at the University of Leicester to begin studying text messaging styles under the hypothesis that forensic research into authorship analysis of such messages might help in future criminal cases. That was a bit complex, that. In 2004, Campbell was granted leave to appeal against his conviction on the grounds that the evidence of his obsession with Danielle and of his interest in schoolgirls should have been excluded at his trial and on further grounds that one of the jurors, the next door neighbour of a police officer, the next door neighbour of a police officer involved in the case should have been discharged. The appeal was dismissed in 2005 by the Court of Appeal. On the 28th of July 2005, an inquest by the coroner was held into Danielle's disappearance, returning a verdict of unlawful killing. Police interviews with Campbell in prison reported that Campbell had still refused to tell them where he had disposed of his victim's body. Well, he won't because that's one admitting guilt. Can't You can't claim innocence if you tell them where the body is. And we know that these sick people hold it as a a power play. Sick. His own niece. Um, in May 2017, Essex and Kent police forces began searching a garage block in 
Saruk after receiving new information and did not rule out looking for a body. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Once I start, I find it hard to stop. Oh. It was reported that similar information regarding suspicious activity around the garages had been received at the time Danielle Jones disappeared, but had not been followed up in the initial investigation. A spokesperson for Essex Police said the force was, quote, working to ascertain why these were not searched as part of the original investigation. It was subsequently announced that no discovery had been made. Contrast between this case and the murder of Hannah Williams. What time are we on? Right, 16 minutes. Okay. I'll click that and then see if we can read about Hannah Williams. Contrast between this case and the murder of Hannah Williams have been drawn, citing the oh, disparity in the news media coverage of the two as an example of missing white women syndrome. Missing white women syndrome, used by social scientists and media to refer to extensive media coverage, especially in television, of missing persons cases involving young white upper middle class women or girls. <sighs> uh, Dukes cites that the media coverage of the Jones case is an example of the news media's um, erotis, erot what is I, uh, erotic isization of the victim in such cases, pointing to the news media reports of the sexual relation betwe between victim and murderer, and removes the news media publication of photographs of the, vic the victim's stockings. Oh. Goodness me. Uh, so who is that? Hannah Williams. I don't, it's not linked, is it? I thought... I thought they were saying that he was possibly in... I thought they were saying that he was um, linked to that. Um, oh my God. Let's just see if there's an arrest made. Conviction of the killer, so it wasn't him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, I know she was in Kent, which is still Essex, so I will do another episode on. Hannah Williams, bless her. So guys, did he do it? That is the question. He sent text messages to himself from Danielle's phone when the phones were in the same area. So clearly he wasn't at a DIY store. That was one question he was happy to answer and lied. Um, and 
stockings were found with both DNA on them. So sad. And she's never been laid to rest or her body has never been found. That must be horrendous for the parents. And then to know that your brother done it. He's the brother of one of the parents, isn't he? Because he's the uncle. Poor family. Oh. These are heartbreaking. Hundred percent heartbreaking. And they searched one thousand five hundred locations. That's how sure they were that he'd done it. And I know in any articles that you read or research, they're not going to tell you everything because they need to hold things back so that when you get questioned and you answer it, ding, 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 only the murderer would know that. And then you get nut jobs confessing to crimes that they didn't do. I mean, what is that about? Oh. So there you go. Another episode of true crimes that happened locally. So, in the comments, we need to know, do you think he did it? I mean, he was convicted and his appeal was rejected. So it certainly looks like it. Well guys, I best let you get on. I hope you've enjoyed or are enjoying the whole series. I'd love to read your comments, so please do let me know what you're thinking. Um, yeah, or reach me on Facebook in the group or my Facebook page. I like to um, turn my light off because I can see the gaps. Not good, not good, not good. Okay, <coughs> I shall. Oh, missed one. Oh, that's where it pinged off, wasn't it? When I was talking. Okay, I'm going to um, let you get on with your day. I hope you have a fabulous one, whatever you do. And I will catch you in my next video, guys. Love, hugs, and sparkles. 
to you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.